this is the new 2023 BMW K1600 GTL. I'm going to test ride and see how different it is from my 2013 GTL. So they got the reverse gear, they got the LCD with full navigation, and they got the keyless uh, touch, I guess, what they call. So mine is also centrally locking, but obviously the heated seats, heated grips, that's all standard. This is my friend Salim, my advisor, his son Asad, the young lad who's getting experience with, as a biker. And let me show you how, yeah, exactly what they're riding. So this is Asad's. He started off with that. Not bad, but this is what my friend writes, the monster. And this package is just unbelievable. It's a last generation Rocket 3 with 2300cc engine. But uh, the way it's built, it's just amazing. The handlebars, everything else. Just, uh, just an amazing bike. This one has a 5-speed transmission versus the new one, which is 6-speed and 2500cc, the new one. All right, so now, finally, they were so busy, had a long wait. Uh, I'm going to test ride this uh, new GTL. Let's see how it goes. They've changed the lights. They've changed the uh, engine configuration a little. And it uh, comes with Shift Pro and uh, all the goodies. Heated grips, heated seats. Uh, now it has the key start and the main thing that I'm missing in my bike is the reverse gear that this one has. It's got a better exhaust. Alright, so the LCD is definitely a big uh, change and shifting for sure is night and day better. It's way smoother than mine for sure. The shifting is definitely much, much better. And they got these winglets, that's for sure, which may make a difference with the buffering issue that I have. You still have a little bit of buffeting here. So again, this is a 2023 BMW K1600 GTL. I have a GTL also, the last generation, I would say. Uh, they haven't really made much differences to this as far as the overall platform is concerned. But uh, some technological changes. All right, so dynamic mode does make a difference. But yeah, the buffering issue is not there. It's definitely overall a much smoother bike. Even though mine is very, very smooth. Yeah, the horn is the same. I love the horns in these K1600s. It's not like a puny beep that usually comes out of motorcycles. Obviously new tires, you got to be a little bit careful. Yeah, the tires feel slippery for some reason. My god, these menus are just quite horrible, man. All right, so overall impressions are positive because uh, it is more refined, it feels more refined. Obviously mine is 2013 and runs like a champ still very very smooth and uh, I've actually ridden more newer bikes than my own bike recently but I don't think I with with any of the other ones I'd like to replace it uh, except another K1600 maybe 
and that's why I'm test writing this. But the resale value of these things uh, is just coming down like a, like a rock. So that's the thing that worries me a little bit. Now for the size of this bike and the kind of fairing and wind protection it has, I would like a little bit less buffeting. It's better than my mine stock to stock, I guess, but it still needs a lot of adjustments. So these uh, new tires seem a little slippery for some reason. I don't know if they still have the factory oil on them or, or not, because this is <laughs> absolutely practically a untouched motorcycle that I'm riding. Yeah, if I uh, get a really good deal, only then. Um, this is a keeper for sure. I do feel the whatever they did in the engine configuration, I do feel a little bit of vibration around 22, 2300 RPM going steady in the seat that I do not feel on uh, my bike. Plus, uh, for some reason, my seat feels a little plusher. My God, this thing is a beast. There is no engine like this. Yeah, so if I lean forward a little bit, the buffering gets better, but then uh, if I go back in the neutral position, how you're supposed to be, then for some reason it just, uh, uh, even at the highest setting of the windshield, it does have the buffering. Handlebars are placed almost perfectly, but I would still, just like on mine, I put the handlebar risers I think 1.5 inch and that made a ton of difference because um, overall the seat is so big and it has a little lumbar support built into the seat and if I really want to lean back a little bit then I extend my arms all the way and I'm about six feet tall so uh, with the handlebar risers that just becomes a breeze and on longer rides that I've done, uh, I haven't done a really long ride on mine either, uh, but you know, uh, six, seven hours, uh, that comes in very, very handy. So what I'm looking for right now, either to replace this with mine and be done with it for now, or uh, just, I'm really digging for an adventure bike and primarily Triumph Tiger 1200. Uh, I. Overall, I like the 2018 to 22 generation more than the new one uh, for the overall technology. Like the main gripe I have is that in the new one, the new one is a lot better. I just uh, did a review on that too, so please uh, check out that video as well. The new Triumph Tiger is absolutely a fantastic bike and a solid improvement over the uh, 2018 to 2022 generation forget about the first generation it's a, it's a night and day difference overall and I would certainly choose that bike over any other generation every time but the price as well as the actual vibration in the engine because of the t-plane configuration now is a lot more noticeable than the regular triple that the old uh, Tiger up until 2022 have. That makes a hell of a difference. So having said that, both are great bikes. Uh, but right now it seems like, just like what happens every time you want to sell something, the market seems to hit the rock bottom, to have hit the rock bottom. And uh, when you want to buy something at the same time, it seems like that there's no much, not much difference in the selling prices which I really, it's a, it's a shame. So that's where I am with my bike also. What I'm getting for it, I'm just not happy with it. And I might as well just keep it. But this bike is probably uh, the key, what makes K1600 GTL very exclusive. Like there's no competition in this class. I'm not really uh, too, a big fan of the bagger version because of the low suspension in the rear and then even more wind issues with that specifically if you want uh, the Grand America with the top box. 
but this one what makes it so unique is the sports touring as well as cruising nobody does it better and then this engine it's just I don't know what they have done with this engine it's just so smooth engine wise I, I really honestly they say that it's uh, the low end has been increased and beefed up uh, the uh, peak torque is available at the lower RPM and accelerating yeah I can feel it but uh, I don't think it's that big of a difference mind uh, mine is pretty torquey as well uh, as well at all speeds the main difference obviously is a brand new bike but uh, what really is more surprising to me is how well the BMWs do this you know my uh, my BMW is almost 10 years old now yet it holds um, its uh, overall integrity amazingly I mean it's, just, it's still nice and tight the one thing that I noticed the difference in this and, and mine is the overall uh, driveline smoothness because that driveline up until I would say 2018 generation uh, meaning 2021 has a has a has a lot of lag or driveline uh, line lash like uh, the lower RPMs you can uh, feel some of the noises and jerks in this they have really smoothened uh, it out but with the same token the suspension in this seems to be a little bit firmer even in the normal setting okay the clutch is very touchy compared to mine yeah but this is awesome and the exhaust and the intake sound in this is way more prominent than mine this is a compelling compelling option So fellas, uh, that was the review for the 2023 black K1600 GTL and this is mine, 2013 K1600 GTL. I got the top box off. Usually I don't put it on for unless I'm going on a longer ride. And uh, there is a difference for sure, but is the difference worth almost between 15 and 20 grand I'm not so sure this one seat twice I feel this has plusher seats for some reason than the new one but everything else like the smoothness of the overall driveline and uh, other factors seem and for some reason that new one feels a little bit lighter also I know they, they haven't done much to the weight now I just told them that look, it has to make absolutely a lot, lot of sense for me to just change the bike with so, such a similar bike that I already have. Yeah, this honestly, yeah, the low end grunt, I think I did feel a little bit uh, sooner. But this one just rides like a new bike. And uh, I can't really justify giving it away. So I have to get good money for it. Because this thing has, uh, is technically as good as brand new, even 10 years old. And uh, got everything. Uh, done all the required maintenance and major maintenance and everything by BMW the same dealership and uh, The suspension in this is a little bit pleasure as well uh, The menu system obviously is going to be a learning curve So I'm not gonna bash it for that because obviously apparently that is a better system the only thing I'm not sure of like this navigation that comes with it is quite uh, it's not the easiest to 
work with. I wish it could just integrate with your phone or um, it had Android Auto or uh, Apple CarPlay. Uh, but the, the new one uh, does not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto either. It just integrates with your phone and then uses your phone's app. And it shows the whole map. That's the good thing. I didn't test it, but that's what I've heard. So having said that, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely a nice thing to, uh, to do. But uh, absolutely, there's nothing in this bike after 10 years uh, of age uh, that would warrant uh, or require a change of such nature. But yeah, you know, that's a newer bike warranty and everything. I still have warranty on this from BMW because I bought it used for another 18, uh, no, actually, yeah, about 18 months. So I'm good with this for now. And uh, that's why, it just has to make sense. Plus, you know, I put, put on handlebar risers, I put on the uh, higher crash guards, the uh, foot pegs, highway foot pegs. And uh, I may have to put the winglets that the new one has, and they seem to make some difference but I didn't feel uh, much difference in the buffeting either the major difference that I felt is the drive line and the shifting how smoother it was and then the quick shift feature because you know you can change the gears without the clutch in any bike it's just when they have the quick shifter installed it's a slipper clutch so the transition is so smooth and quick that you don't uh, you don't really feel the effort or the jerk and that's where uh, the difference lies. But otherwise, uh, the reverse gear is another major thing that I, I wish sometimes that I had. It's not a big thing in, in most cases, but you know when you when you need it, that's when you realize that I wish it was there. So um, I like this gauge cluster as well. It gives you a good balance of technology. But the menu in this gauge cluster is the easiest of any bike. And I think I've ridden almost all major brands and most uh, of their bikes. Uh, the heavy, heavy bikes I'm talking about, the heavy bore bikes, big bore bikes. Viewers, thank you for watching this video. And if you uh, liked it, please subscribe and share and comment below. If I've missed anything that you would like to know more about. Thank you.